Hello everyone. Welcome to another J. Robinson Art Peel Off Painting Project. Today we're going to be painting a very lovely couple standing under an umbrella in the rain or near a waterfall or you could pretty much look at this picture in a lot of different ways. The picture is very simple, very easy, a lot of fun. As Peel Off does, all you have to do is push around a few colors and be creative. So let's talk about the supplies that you get. These are the colors that we're going to be working with today. We're going to be working with blue. We're going to be working with white. We're going to be working with red. And we're going to be working with black as needed. Now, the colors that we give you is more than enough for any project. And what you see that I have laid out here is a lot more than we'll be using today. But for purposes of the video, for you to be able to see it, I've squeezed out a little bit more than, again, we'd actually be needing. We provide you with a plastic apron. We also give you one paper towel. I would recommend that you try to have several around you. We give you a plastic spatula to help you remove the peel. And we also give you a very nice brush kit that comes with more brushes than you'll probably need. The kit themselves with the kit, this makes the kit even worth it because you can use these over and over again in various different projects. Now here's a take, to take a quick look at what we have, but before I do, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that any new videos that come up, you'll be some of the first to know. And you can look at some of our other projects that we have available. You can also go to peeloff.com, that's P-E-I-L-O-F-F, Dot com so that you can see some of the different kits and projects that we have available. And we also have a website, jrobinsonart.com, where if you're a community and you're looking for uh, something or someone to come out and provide you with services, our company does that as well. With that being said, let's get to the video. Here's the project for today. Cool, simple, and easy. We're going to be working with the background first, and then we're just going to add some little coloration here to keep the picture looking like it's raining, paint the umbrella, and there you have it. And we also provide you with an 8x10 canvas with the peeler fixed. This just helps you block out the area so as we finish painting, it makes it easy for you to transition from the background to the foreground completed picture. I like to use a lot of different brushes. Today I'm using some of my beat up favorites. I don't like throwing things away. But again, your kit comes with this very nice 10 piece premium brush set that we provide for you at no additional cost with each kit that you purchase. That being said, let's get started. I'm gonna show you just how fun and just how easy this can be. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick up our big flat brush, or in your case, a flat brush, probably look like this, and you're going to use a little bit of white, and right down the center here, I'm just going to streak in some color. So I'm just going to come here, I want the brush strokes to kind of stay, so I'm going to stroke lightly, just to create the illusion that there's something going on right here, right down the middle. You know, right here where the couple are, you see how I'm painting over the couple, see how I'm leaving some of the, the uh, texture showing, which is fine. Some of the background can bleed through, that's fine as well. But I'm going to try to make this area somewhat solid. Making sure I make sure that I catch my character design quite nicely. And here's my middle portion of the painting, right there. Maybe I'll go just a little bit wider because we can. Maybe I'll go to here. Maybe I'll end up maybe going here. Now, when you're painting a J. Robinson on peel off project, I'm showing you one variation. You can literally look and do your own backgrounds. That's the beauty of a peel off painting project as well. You're not held to numbers, you're not held to specifics, and you're not, not definitely held to one 
painting. You can make the same painting over and over again, changing the background as often as you like. Making a bright sunny day and maybe the umbrella is protecting them against the sun. So here now on both sides, I'm going to leave the color on the brush. I'm going to grab a little bit of blue. And on both sides, I'm going to streak in a blue tone. Just like this, right next to the white. I'll even pick up a tiny bit of white and go right over that. Because I really want it to be kind of a light color. But when it comes to the color, that's up to you. It's your painting. You do as you see fit. There, yeah, this is what I'm looking for. I want those lines. You see those, you see those brush strokes that are starting to show up? I want those. Because they help show what's happening, that something's falling down, that some kind of some kind of something is happening here. See that? That's what I want. I want that look. So let's give it back one more time. Just watch. See that? That's what I want. I grab a little bit of more, a little blue. We come to the opposite side. Excuse my hand, it'll be gone in a second. And I'm going to put a light color over here of blue. The cool thing about acrylic paint, which is what we're using here, is non-toxic. It dries rather quickly, too. So you don't have to wait a long time, as you would with oils, for your paintings to set up or dry. And I'm going to transition this a little bit here. Transition this a little bit here. So now I have the two, what I consider, primary colors but as you see, the brush strokes are all facing down. You see, I never went left or right. I just went straight up and down because I want this, the brush strokes to show that flow or feeling of water. Off to the side, I have a cup of water. I'm going to stick my brush in it, stir it up, make some chicken soup, bang it. I call that ringing the bell. And then with my paper towel, which I don't like to ball up. I just leave it flat and just wipe my brush. Get some of that color off. I'm going to go back into the white because I have these two black sides. On these two sides, I really just want to streak in some color. Not really looking to paint it solid. I'm not looking for any particular thing except something like that is fine. Come over here and do the same thing. See? Transition. So now we have a flow of what looks like something coming down, which is really what I'm after. And now right down here, I'm gonna pick up some white. And now I'm gonna make where they're standing. Now I can go right across here and then just make a kind of a stroke in motion. Now I'm gonna go left to right because whatever's falling down here has hit the ground. So now what I wanna do is give you the impression that is fallen and is piling up over here somewhere. Let me show you how the, the black can come in and help you in a moment. So see how I'm streaking it left and right, but I'm leaving some openings. But to even be better, you can actually take some black on your brush and just go in and start to redefine some areas. Now I'm, now I'm just streaking. This is ground that has gotten water on it, but the water's ran maybe a little bit. So now I'm just reintroducing this back again because I wanted to cover up some of the stuff that I pulled down. Take, wipe off my brush, maybe stir it a little bit, wipe it off, get it dry. And now I'm gonna come in and kind of streak a little bit, soften this a little bit. And then I'm going to step back, take a look, and see if I need to do more. And I believe I do. So now I'm going to grab some more black. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make some bolder streaks. Just streaking like this. This is fine. And then maybe soften that. And then in some places, I'm going to grab some white. And on some of these, I'm just going to pull some color. Like this, just pull some color. And then I'm going to soften that up a little bit. So all I'm doing now is I'm looking for effect. I'm looking for the look as maybe some of this is shadowed in the ground. Maybe it just traveled a little bit, blurred a little bit. 
just to have movement. And maybe I'll take some white now and I'll highlight just a few areas with a little bit more white. Because I'm just trying to make it look like puddles have occurred from whatever this is. See how I keep calling it too, right? I'm not giving it any particular name because we don't know what's going on back there. We know that it's wet. We know that it's water. And that's all we care about. We're painting. We're being creative. We're pushing around a few colors and just seeing what happens. And this looks good to me. There. So now we're going to do the fun part. Clean off my brush. I like to always clean off my equipment, even if I'm not going to be using it. Because you never know when you might need to. Might as well be ready to go. And you see how my paper towel has picked up a lot of clean and I just flip it over. Or you could turn it inside out. Which is why I never crumple up my paper towels. I mean, paper towels are cheap. True. But this works better for me. So now I'm going to grab my spatula. And here it is. And how I like to grip it is right around the neck. So I'm not trying to use it like a spoon. I want to grab it right up in here so I can get that, that kind of a flip. And the cool thing about a peel-off project is you don't have to go any particular place to get it up. You're looking for any place that you can kind of get it started. There you go. See, that little start is all I need. Now I take and just pull away. And what I'm left with is the couple in silhouette. And I move this off to the side. You can crinkle up and throw it away. Or you could even use it again if you desire. We do sell packets that you can use to put on wood, put on glass, put on bags, put on different things to help you use this very same technique to decorate a wall. It's a decorative thing. It's a creative thing. So now in here I have the umbrella. And yes, this is white. Now for some of you, I may lose you here, but just stay with me. If you painted this red, it wouldn't bounce back as vivid a red as you want. What I'm going to do is take some white paint and paint that umbrella. Just the umbrella. Put my pinky in the body. Come over here and I'm just going to transition the color now. Now, you're not going to lose where it is because you can see there's a difference. And you'll have a general idea of the basic shape. But sometimes, just to make sure... I like to leave a few spotted lines that I'll come back and clean up later. And now here's where I'm going to create the umbrella. Try to make sure I get all of the shape right. And all I'm doing is blocking in, blocking in color. But I'm staying in the umbrella. I don't want to lose that shape. So I want to maintain wherever the curves and lines are. To maintain the shape of the umbrella. There. That's a good enough transition for me right there. Now what you want to do now is you want to let that dry. So while that's drying, why don't we take the same flat brush and use it on the angle. Like you can use a brush this way or this way. I'm going to use the brush this way. And I'm going to go in here. And I'm just going to streak down. Some lines, some purposeful lines to help again with that flow on this side. They can be odd. The faster and easier you go, the better. This is just going to help establish more of the flow of something falling down in this dark area here. Soften some of this up. Grab that big, big brush. Remember I told you, keep it ready to go. And then I'm going to softly blend that in. See, just to help your eye see lines that are going straight up and down a little bit stronger. Maybe on this side, since we do have a lot, maybe I won't do as many. I'll just do a few. Just to, again, help you see 
lines flowing so your eyes will be comfortable that something is flowing here. Maybe in here. And all the while, my umbrella is drying in what I like to call setting up. I still want to go back in here and kind of make some little shadow drops of some stuff. I don't, who knows what it is. Just, again, something reflective, something splashing, something moving. Just to give so that that huge gush isn't just sitting flat. That it's actually creating some kind of a movement. And I always like to have some color that sits very strongly on top of color. As if something is flowing down here as well. So now I'm just accenting while I'm waiting for this to dry. Should you have made the mistake of using water and it gets underneath here, take the black, paint from the inside, and redefine your lines. But this is looking good. So I'm going to take, clean off this brush. And see if my white is ready. By taking some red, which is going to be my umbrella. And now I'm going to take my time again and redefine the whole umbrella in red. See how that pops up? You see how that red is very vivid, very strong? Because I'm using the white as my underpainting now. So that I can put the color right on top of it and have it to really stand up. If you would not have used the white, your red would be a lot darker because it's being painted directly on black. Because this is not fully dry, I'm going to just block in lightly. I'm going to stroke. I'm going to pull the paint and leave it. And then maybe I'll go back and hit it one more time. But right now, for your purposes, I'm going to show you how to just paint over it so that you get the color in that you need. Then we're going to try to go in and put back the umbrella shape. And for that, we're going to switch brushes. But for now, let me just do this. There. Nice red umbrella. Now we're going to take the pointy brush, which is going to act as a pencil. And yes, I am cleaning off that brush. This one's cleaned off. So now I have two clean brushes sitting and drying while I work this pointed brush. I'm going to twirl the paint, and then I'm going to make the little points at the bottom of the umbrella. So excuse my hand being in your way, because all I'm doing now is just creating the shape of the umbrella like so. See? Starting to look more like an umbrella. But it always has, it didn't change. Now I'm gonna come over here. Another little dimple. We just went over here. That's good enough for me. I could even take this small brush, very lightly go over the areas that are a little bit white just to let some paint sit strongly red. And believe it or not, that fast, that quick, that simple, that easy, and I hope we had fun, my painting is finished. You can sign it. You can gift it. You can use an 8x10 frame to frame it. You could go on our website and look for other loving couples, such as this one. You can go in and find our bag kits. You can go in and find our kits that have canvas, stretch canvas. We provide you with many different ways in which you could apply this technique. We sell all our products, all inclusive. We even sell the actual pieces individually so you can place them wherever you like. Well, I want to thank you so much for allowing me to paint with you. I really appreciate it. I had a good time. I told you this one was fun, easy, and simple. We have tons of different um, projects for you to choose from. Some are not as quick or simple, but yet they're all easy and fun. 
So again, thank you for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Send me any comments that you like. And we look forward to doing more paintings with you in the future. Until next time, take care, have fun, push around a few colors. Peel Off is a project painting kit for you. Bye-bye.